I'm going to very quickly try to explain a couple different ways to make pads in Ableton Live. Um, I'm going to just start with a basic atmospheric pad that plays essentially over one chord, usually the tonic chord, the one chord in the key of whatever piece you're playing in. This could be a major chord in a major key, obviously, or it could also be a major chord that is the third of a minor key that you might be playing in, because let's say you're playing in the key of A minor, a C major chord often will sound good over that. As long as you have a bass player in the band who keeps coming back to the A, you're still going to get the sense that you're in A minor, even though the chord playing on top of it is going to make it sound more like an A minor 7. In most pop music, that's going to be okay. This uh, will eliminate the need to have minor and major pads in every key. So instead of having 24 pads so that you can have a C major and a C minor pad, you can just have 12 pads and make the major pad work for you in the minor key. So that's an atmospheric pad. I'm going to deal with in a separate video the issue of making a pad sound that you can play on the keyboard, something that will play a different iteration of that sound on every key of the keyboard so that you can play full chords with it and work with it in the arrangement of the song. This would be just a basic atmospheric pad that plays in the background. So there's lots of ways to begin working with a pad like this. I'm going to uh, choose the key of, um, let's say, D. You need to start with some kind of sound. It could be any kind of sound. Uh, I'm going to record something real quick on this. Uh, microphone and just use that as my basic sound. So I'm going to open up a new audio track and I'm going to arm it and I'm going to record a sound. So I don't even know what key that was in. It actually went on the wrong track because I had I have two set here and I have one set here, so it didn't even come in the right place. But I'm just going to bump it down to here. So let's take a look at what we got. I'm double click. So here's our odd noise. And it really is a noise. It's just a um, random noise, not even really a uh, pitch, uh, although I suppose there is a pitch underneath all that noise. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it down to cut off the beginning and cut off the end and then crop it so that now I just have this sound going from beginning to end. <laughs> And I'm going to take it and move it over into session view and drop it in an audio track. I'm going to turn off that arming because we don't need to record on it again. Okay, now I'm just going to get this thing to loop for me by turning on loop. Now it should go over and over and over again. Very nice. So what I'm going to do is start adding some effects that are going to really chop this thing up and make it sound a lot less like me just making noise into a microphone and make it sound like something a little washier. So I'm going to throw a delay on it, I'm going to throw a reverb on it, and we're going to see what those sound like. sounding. Let's push this up some. More reverb. Okay, I'm going to add another delay, a grain delay. I'm going to turn up the spray control. Turn this down to about 50%. So what I'm doing there is this is 50% dry wet, so you're hearing 
half the original sound and half the sound up an octave. If, you, if we turn this up 100%, you can hear just what the grain delay is doing. Here, it's giving it that tubular kind of sparkle. And all the way down is just the original. And 50 is both mixed together. I'm going to turn the feedback up on this one, too. And it starts to give it some air. Go back to the clip. I'm going to crank up the output on the clip. So right now it just sounds like a bunch of buzzing bees. Now this is where the magic happens. What I'm going to do is take a resonator and a resonator is basically a filter that forces the whatever sound you're creating to resonate around a specific pitch. So um, there's all kinds of resonators built in here. We're just going to hear what some of these sound like. So I'm going to play the clip and then I'm going to drop the resonators in after all this other effects. Here, that gives it a pitch. Try this one. It's very metallic sounding. Some minor chords. Ooh, that sounds dark and sort of deadly, like a uh, like an alien spaceship. Okay, so you get the idea. So um, I'm just going to pick one and start messing with it. Actually, you know what? Better yet, I'm just going to grab the basic resonator without one of the presets. So I've got the filter turned on, and we're doing um, the pitch D. So I'm going to go to the first resonator and do D. Go down an octave from that. So this is a D. I think what I'm going to do is turn this off for a moment and go back to my original clip. And I'm going to tune it. I think that's D.
now we can start building a chord. So we've got D is the first resonator. The second one is going to be registered in semitones above and below that. So if I go to plus four, it's going to make a major third. If I go minus 12, it'll make a lower octave. If I go plus seven, it'll make a fifth. This would be, plus 12 would be the octave. So play with the filters a little bit. Plus five would make a sus chord. I'm going to play with the relative volumes of the filters. compressor to the end of this. All this is is a compressor that allows you to hear me talking. Um, audio 1 is going to turn down the volume of audio 2. <clears throat> so now when I talk it should attenuate the volume of audio 2 just a little bit so you can hear me talking push this up so. so yeah now whenever I talk you should be able to hear me more clearly okay going back to our auto filter I'm going to pull back the frequency a little bit to darken it frequency oscillator and what that does is you won't be able to see it but what it's going to do is it's going to vary the frequency it's going to be taking this frequency and making it go up and down like that and this is the rate of the oscillator the faster the rate the faster you hear it 
So when I turn the rate up, it'll be as if it's going like this. And a slow rate would be like, very slow like that. So here, it's a slow rate right now. This would be a faster one. start moving this auto filter back through the signal chain since it's giving me some good motion that's before the resonator Add a second one. So I'm going to uh, hit Command C or Control key C on a Mac to copy that and actually paste another copy of it here at the end. Except I'm going to change the frequency and the rate. throws the delay into different channels left and right. Adds a little stereo depth. And then a reverb. fun I'm gonna make an exact duplicate of this with command D on a Mac or control D on a PC I'll start both of these and I'm gonna throw this one to the left channel and this one to the right settings on these.
In fact, it looks like the right one is clipping the output more than the left one, so I'm going to turn the right output down even more. Until they match. That looks good. So I'm going to make another audio track. from the master track. Actually, resampling would be good. I'm just going to record. So now we have a copy just on this track. So there's your pad, and you can loop it. 